All right, man, peace. So now let's find out what the panel has to say about what Kobe Bryant asserted in his interview pertaining to LeBron James. All right, you just heard Kobe Bryant very excited on our show discussing the Lakers. Mm-hmm. Paul, I want your sure. sort of rapid reaction, especially when he said, yeah, I just, I want him to succeed. There's no competitiveness how he's going to do with my team. Well, I mean, Kobe's the... In other words, Rachel Nichols is not buying what Kobe Bryant is selling. It just goes to show you that her interview was agenda driven and I'm sure that Kobe understood that already he knows that he's walking through a landmine whenever he's being interviewed about LeBron James because LeBron James I would not quite call him a peer but he was a rival during that era because Kobe was experiencing more team success than LeBron was when Kobe was at his peak at his pinnacle when LeBron rose to his pinnacle Kobe was on the decline but Kobe understands the rules of engagement in regards to interviews like this he knows that They're going to try to nitpick his words to see if they can find any malice or any envy in some of the things that he's going to say or if he's going to try and be petty. He's been looking for someone to pass the torch to. I mean, obviously it was supposed to be uh, Ball. I mean, yeah, of course. You know, it's always when you go through a new generation of a great Lakers superstar, it's always who's next. You know, it started with Magic, Will, all those guys. And the fact of the matter is that The L.A. Laker franchise history has always been not only that we're going to draft a superstar, but we're also going to import one. They drafted Jerry West and Elgin Baylor, but they imported Will Chamberlain. They drafted Magic Johnson, James Worthy, and they imported Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. They drafted Kobe, and they imported Shaq. So LeBron James is that import. Can Lonzo Ball be that great draftee? We'll see. Uh, Kareem, then Kobe and Shaq, and it was like, who's going to be next? Now, even though LeBron wasn't brought up in the Laker Nation draft and system throughout his career, yeah. L.A. needs a superstar. This is what L.A. is all about, something to get excited about. And that's what Kobe is saying. Of course, because L.A. is about show business. And Kobe understands that as he currently is trying to engraft himself firmly into the cinematic world, as is LeBron James. So they may be competing in other fields very soon. We'll see. I don't think that Kobe wants to act, but he certainly wants to get involved in the production aspect. LeBron is already involved in the production aspect, but I think that he also wants to be an actor. Lord knows he does a good enough job acting on a basketball court. That performance that he gave after Game 4 of the NBA Finals last year when he came out with his wife's black scarf wrapped around his right wrist, claiming that his hand was broken, that deserved an Academy Award. He's excited now. He's like, I'm even going to show up to some games. Right. I mean, yeah. You know, when does Kobe go to some games? Right, it's exactly. like, okay, because there's expectations. When you play for franchises like the Lakers, there's expectations. There's expectations of who's going to carry the torch with the next great superstar and about winning championships. And when you Not only are they going to be expectations, but we don't quite know exactly how good this L.A. Lakers team is going to be. Basically, they're bringing in the best player in the NBA, LeBron James, and they're going to accompany him with a mishmash of assorted names. Some of them you can consider good players. Others of them we're not quite sure how good they are or how good they're going to be playing alongside LeBron. That's what makes this LA Lakers experiment so exciting and a very important aspect of the NBA. Just like every season, you have movies that are expected to be contenders to win Oscars. You also need movies that are just popcorn fare that people go to just to enjoy the show. That's what the LA Lakers are going to be. You bring LeBron on board, that's the expectation. Like he's been to more Sparks games than Laker games. I right? know. <laughs> I've seen him there. That's what right? when I see him at the Sparks games is when I say, "Hey, we don't see any Laker games." <laughs> yeah. Been- well, the Sparks are contenders for the WNBA title. There's a reason that he has Laker daughters games. that play basketball, that he really supports women's basketball, and he mm-hmm. follows the game closely. And I think it said something that he didn't, he didn't show up a lot last year, which is, one, he's giving himself some distance, and he is truly busy, and he lives down in Orange County and all that. But you don't show up unless somebody's worthy of showing up. Exactly. Okay? So LeBron James is worth his time. He's worthy. <laughs> to be the same way down to Orange County. Well, he's got that helicopter. Uh, he's still taking that to Lake Yeah, of course. Yeah, he's got it whenever he wants. He'll just jump out. You're not going to get in the helicopter and come on up here to watch a game for a team that's a lottery team. What about sort of when he said, oh, when I said, hey, do you need to get Kawhi now to maximize LeBron's window? Paul, his reaction was, and look again, he and Rob Palenka are very close. So let's not forget that. So this is maybe in line with Rob's thinking. Mm-hmm. He was like, hey, we just, you know, I'll be happy to see how the young guys develop and sort of form off LeBron. LeBron's turning 35. Yeah, it's not getting any younger. I mean, 
Le- well, that should tell you that LeBron James's number one priority is not winning a championship. That's what that should tell you because believe me, if LeBron James's number one priority was winning a championship with the LA Lakers, particularly this season, he would have communicated to Magic Johnson and Rob Palenka that we have to do whatever we need to do to get Kawhi Leonard onto this team. I don't care who we have to trade. That's what LeBron James would have told them. The fact that they're taking such a cavalier approach to acquiring Kawhi Leonard tells me that LeBron James' main priority for this season is making sure that he cements many of his business ties in the Hollywood world off the basketball court. He figures that the basketball court is going to take care of itself. I mean, the window is four years. You know, that's the window. It's a short window. To win one. LeBron is not trying to win four in four years. He just wants to win one. Short window. Who knows how good these young guys are going to be in the next few years. And so if you got a chance to go all in and an opportunity to get Kawhi with LeBron in the next four years, you have to do it. You have to do it. How about I mean, this year? This year. So they you have, have to do it now. If there's talking. a possibility, you have to do it. Right. What they've been doing is setting up to where the leverage starts to shift in their direction, which is... Some- or maybe the LA Lakers have heard overtures that... What is being alleged about Kawhi Leonard not wanting to play with LeBron may have some credence to it. Signing everyone to one-year deals, keeping that cap space for next summer. By the way, it's not just Kawhi as a free agent next summer, it's Klay Thompson. And I know that's, the, if you were to design a perfect player to, to be along, it's like we mentioned shooting earlier, sure. that would be the guy you would go get. And Kyrie, but we know he's not signing with the Lakers. <laughs> yeah, <Continue. laughs> I can't see that. Jimmy Butler as well, I believe, is a free agent after this season. And he is a player who is relatively commensurate with Kawhi. And he also is a fan of LeBron James. At least, allegedly, he's a fan of LeBron James. Even though there are different types of fans when it comes to your peers. Some of your peers are fans of watching you, but they would never want to play with you. And that seems to be the predominant type of fandom that LeBron James experiences from his peers in the NBA. They appreciate what he brings to the table, but it does not seem that most of them want to play with him. Um, but I think they've been doing that to try to just have the leverage shift in their favor. You know, Philly's obviously still aggressive with the Spurs, and there's other teams that have been aggressive with the Spurs still talking to them. But when I ch- look at Michael Jordan, Michael, like, hey, Jeannie, I got the hotel room already squared away. Just bring the black lace lingerie, the red pumps, and the whipped cream, and I'll show you how I take it to the hole. When I checked in today, the conversations were still very far apart. There was one person even said it was at a standstill. Um, in the sense that the Spurs still want three great players and draft picks, and the Lakers are more like, eh, one, two, you know? like. There's no way if you're the L.A. Lakers that you can give away three of your young players' draft picks for a Kawhi Leonard that you're not quite sure how healthy he is mentally or physically. You just can't do that. Like, they're, they're still really far apart what they what they think of value this year. I say get Kawhi Leonard. Right? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't give up Brandon Ingram, but just what? about everybody... If you wouldn't give up Brandon Ingram, then you're not going to get Kawhi Leonard. That's the bottom line of it, because I guarantee you, that's the main player that the San Antonio Spurs want. Wouldn't you? I mean, I I think that is going to be sort of the tipping point of the deal. And look, I I love Brandon Ingram as a player. I know why the Lakers want to keep him. But Kawhi Leonard just turned 27 two days ago, right? So if you get him and you have confidence that you can extend him and keep him for a long time, that could be your franchise player going forward. You don't need to be developing, continuing to develop Brandon Ingram. LeBron is turning 34 at the end of this year. If you wait till next summer, Ramona, he'll be turning 35. Mm -hmm. Well, let's be for real. If LeBron James is not putting as much onus on his age as you are, what does that tell you about how LeBron James views his tenure with the L.A. Lakers? Maybe he does not see this entire L.A. Lakers experiment as a proverbial championship litmus test, meaning he understands that his career is not going to be evaluated based off of how many championships he was going to be able to win with the L.A. Lakers. He knows that for the most part, his legacy is already set in stone. If he can add a couple of more chips, that may ratchet where he stands amongst the NBA hierarchy up a couple of rungs. But he knows that he's never going to catch Jordan, and that's who he wants to catch. So he knows that that's not going to happen. I'm pretty sure that he's told Magic and Rob Palenka that they don't have to mortgage the future for Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi will be there next year. We can take this year to understand exactly what we want to do as a team. I'm pretty sure that Luke Walton is not going to last the season. And I'm pretty sure that Lonzo Ball is not going to last the season either, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. And at some point, he'll be a nice guy as a complimentary piece. Don't you want LeBron as a real central piece and Kawhi together? That's what you want. You kind of need to do it now. 
Not to put pressure on anyone, but you know. <laughs> window is short. Who there knows? <laughs> Beyond that, I need to know exactly what Kawhi Leonard is bringing to the table physically. Because if that leg injury is as debilitating as he was projecting it was last season, the Lakers have to properly evaluate that they're not receiving junk stock. But anyway, that's pretty much it once again on the evaluation of Kobe Bryant's statements in regards to LeBron James coming to the LA Lakers. We'll definitely see what happens. Peace.